cheers we got a new year but that doesn't mean last call ends and we're talking about 10 books that are hitting final order cutoff this monday night so pull up a chair have a drink with us and we're going to get to it right after this intro What's going on guys? It's Brian and Jack with Supervance Comics, where we do a lot of comic and pop culture related content on this channel. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. This is The Last Call Show, where we are talking about 10 books that are hitting final order cutoff this coming Monday night, January 6th at 10 p.m. We're also going to give you a bunch of additional printings that are coming out hitting final cutoff as well. But either way, we're going to get into it right now, kicking off the new year with Power Rangers Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number one. I know this book already came out, but they have a special unlocked variant that's hitting final cutoff this Monday night. You know Jack and I are big fans of both Ninja Turtles and Power Rangers. Jack more so than myself, but I'm enjoying the ride nonetheless. And this is one book that we're really excited for, right, Jack? Yeah, that's right. Ross Ritchie, uh, the CEO of Boom Studios, he uh, posted this book on Instagram uh, a couple weeks ago kind of letting everyone know, kind of almost as a thank you, that there's going to be a bonus black and white um, variant edition released. And I think it's kind of going under the radar. Uh, it's getting, like we said, it's getting ready to hit FOC this upcoming Monday. Um, it's an opportunity for retailers to get those orders in. It'll be really interesting to see kind of as a test case as it's not quite a late printing, but it is a late printing. Um, it's a variant. What will the store's response to it be? Will it be ordered heavily? Will it be readily available come release day? Or is this a book that you really need to get your order in pre-FOC? This will be an interesting one to check out. Yeah, and definitely for someone that might be a completionist that is a Power Rangers or Ninja Turtle fan, might not be one of those covers that really spikes, but for those true fans, those readers out there that want to get all those covers, this is one they want to be keep an eye out for. Getting over to the big two with DC Books, we get Superman Heroes. This is almost like a one-shot. We know lately that Superman has revealed his identity as Clark Kent, or vice versa, I guess you could say. Clark Kent's secret identity is Superman. But either way, this is one of those one-shots. It's got a bunch of different authors on it, a bunch of different artists, and it's basically dealing with how the heroes are dealing with the news. Right, Jack? Yeah, and there's been mixed reviews on the whole Superman identity reveal since Brian Michael Bendis brought it to the forefront with DC Comics. But, you know, for me, you and I have talked about this. I, I like it. I, I like the humanization of it. And I think this is a cool add-on. If, if you like it for that element, you're going to really enjoy this one shot, I think. And again, I mean, that's just a, a guess at this point. But just judging from the solicitation, getting a chance to see how this decision to kind of out himself impacts each of the people in his life, like from, um, you know, Jimmy Olsen to Lois Lane, um, to the staff at Daily Pl the Daily Planet, the Justice League, the other heroes in the Justice League, how does this affect them? Um, that That's going to be great. And then we have kind of a Justice League team up of creators, like you mentioned, where you've got Brian Michael Bendis, Matt Fraction, Greg Rucka, um, Jody Hauser, all teaming up to work on this book together. Yeah, this is one thing that, I'm going to probably pick up this one shot just because I'm liking the story, but this is also one that I'm hoping when it's all said and done, you get that little single hardcover that has the Superman issues, the Lois Lane issues, and this one shot all together because from a reading point of view, I always like to have the hardcover or the trade, so I'm not going back and opening up those floppies every time I just have it sitting there on the bookshelf and go, oh man, I remember this was a good story, I'm going to go back and read it again. So either way... That's why it's on the list this week. Most of these picks, we're telling you right now, there's nothing that's super glaring out there for us, but these are all great reader picks, and that's what we're mostly discussing on this video. Protector number one. This is a new series from Image Comics. It looks pretty epic. It looks like one of those fantasy type books. If you like those books, they, they kind of describe it as a little bit different here, a little combination of multiple like franchises that people can relate to, right, Jack? Yeah, but I'm always real hesitant, Brian, when the publisher themselves try to kind of link with things like Conan. Um, that's a kind of 
Right. Anytime you do anything that's kind of like post-apocalyptic, kind of like Stone Age type looking thing, you can you can draw that comparison, but that's a very loose comparison. But this will get a lot of attention. It's image number one protector. Um, but you know, just on the outset of looking at it, it doesn't necessarily look like my my type of series. Um, but this is one that I'll pay attention to because I think it's going to be a smaller printed image series and like a lot of the number ones that get released and it, it, this is one you maybe if it's not initially like this is a book i want to check out you may pay attention to the reader buzz for it. and this is why we appreciate the community letting us know what books they enjoy because this is easily a book that i could see myself passing out and then others letting me know through issue two three hey this is one you need to check out yeah this one to me strikes me as if you're a fan of like reaver or a fan of little bird from image those type books that this might be down your alley. I'm definitely in it for issue one. And it's funny because they relate it to Conan, Mad Max, and then of course the Expanse. And then later in the solicit, they talk about it's in like the far off future. But to me, when I think of Conan and Mad Max, I think of kind of almost in the past, or mm. like you said, that post apocalyptic. So right. I'm anxious to see. And speaking of the Expanse, over holiday break, I heard a bunch of good things about it. I tried to get into it. I've got two issues and I still couldn't. So if you guys watched watching this, and you're big fans of The Expanse, let me know. What am I missing out on? Maybe I'll try to watch it again. But either way, Protector number one hits final cutoff this Monday night. Star Wars number two. We just got that new reboot recently. Issue number one just came out. We got the movie out. We talked about how The Mandalorian's big. Everything is Star Wars right now. Here we get issue number two. It's going to have a regular cover. There's also a Chris Sprouse variant as well as a Ben Oliver variant. And this book, what, shortly takes place right after the events of Empire Strikes Back, I believe. Right, and that's was the purpose of the reboot of the series was to kind of get them in line with the timeline that they wanted to tell uh, for storytelling purposes. But this book was solicited at the exact same time issue number one was solicited. Um, it was kind of like a joint solicitation. So we don't know anything more about issue number two than we knew about number one. That's done on purpose to not spoil that first issue. So it'll be interesting to see what the print run of this is. Like I said, you had originally, um, these were solicited at the same time. It'll be a lot of it determined by how well stores are able to sell number one. If stores have a good sell through rate for number one, they'll jump on number two. Um, but that will be determined again, FOC being on Monday. But if you enjoyed number one, that is why we have this show because now you get that heads up. Go ahead and get that issue number two ordered. Make sure you're locked in for whatever cover you may want. It's going to sound bad, but the main reason outside of kind of being a Star Wars fan that I would like to pick these books up is this being written by Charles Sewell. And he wrote that Darth Vader series is absolutely phenomenal. So that's one of the reasons alone why I've been picking up. I picked up issue one. I'm picking up issue number two. I'm just picking up the regular covers just for the story. But either way, final order cut off this Monday night as well. Then sticking with big releases that came out this week, we're staying with Marvel. We got Thor number two. The issue number one just came out. We got Donny Cates writing Thor. This is going to have three covers as well. There's the regular cover. There's a Nick Klein variant, but there's also looks to be an incentive one in 25 in Hyak Lee variant. Either way, I enjoyed the first issue. I'm excited to see where this is going. So I'm looking forward to picking up the second issue on this. And I know even though you might not be a huge Thor fan, Jack, you do like some Donnie Kate. So I'm sure you're probably getting this as well. Yeah, I do. And it's funny because I haven't been able to kind of really sink my teeth into a, a Thor series. I've enjoyed a lot of what Jason Aaron's done. I don't put it on Jason Aaron because I think he's an, an absolutely amazing writer. I like almost everything he does. Um, just the character, the whole mythology aspect of it hasn't always kind of resonated with me. But I got a vibe from the first issue of this series. This is going to be a little different. Um, there's going to be a little bit of a cosmic element, um, more of a tie into the Marvel Comics universe. Now, we mentioned that this is really a reader buzz show, but this is the one issue where I'll say, who knows? We have no basis of information, right? But if you go back and you look at Donny Cates' track run, every one of his series has had some character that's kind of sparked through that series. He had it with Venom. We saw it with Venom in issue three and seven and nine being very positive back issues. Um, I have no doubt something's going to come in this Thor series. It's just a matter of when. Um, and I don't, and I don't want to overhype or oversell something, but 
in a lot of num number two issues that we talk about a lot on the channel, it's basically dwindled down to just your readers. But I think that those who are trying to get ahead of the first appearance market may want to pay attention to these early issues as well. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, that's kind of, I think, why some of the attention is drawn to Thor right now. I like it. I mentioned before how at first I felt like a little selfish kid who knew something because I was a big Thor fan and didn't want other people in my Super Bowl. But I like that it's drawn attention to the title and to that character. Donny Cates brings him over. That's great. Me, I always wait. It kind of always touches the surface of it, but you want that Thor comic that is follows like that Norse mythology that's kind of dark and brutal the way the Vikings worshipped. But either way, Thor number two, I'm looking forward to pick this up. Sticking with Marvel, coming right out of the vents of Absolute Carnage, we're getting that miniseries with Ravencroft number one. This is going to have a regular cover. There's also a Kim Jacinto variant, as well as a 1 in 25 incentive Ryan Brown variant for this. Right, we talked about some of the one-shots that are coming out, um, the ruins of Ravencroft one-shots, and kind of like how Ravencroft is that kind of Arkham Asylum of the Marvel Universe that hasn't really been talked about. It kind of flies under the radar, and it's really interesting that Marvel chooses right now with horror being as hot as it is to really strike while the iron's hot and come out with these uh, series. Now, you mentioned the cover A. Cover A is interesting. Those are actually done by Gabriel Delato. So for those Delato completionists, that's another one to keep an eye out for. But this is a really a, a real and true reader buzz pick that could pop some back issues. We talked last time when we discussed those runes of Ravencroft issues, um, some of the back issues surrounding the Ravencroft Institute. Um, I expect some of those to pop if the reader buzz stays strong with these. But let us know in the chat, in the comments, if you are going to check out these Ravencroft releases. Now this is right in Jack's wheelhouse. He's a big Valiant fan, but we got Quantum and Woody number one. This is going to have a couple different covers for it. You got a cover A, which is by David Nakayama. You got that cover B Johnson variant. You got that Lopez variant. You have the blank variant. But there's also that 1 in 100 Fool's Gold variant, as well as that pre-order bundle variant. And you've talked about these pre-order bundle variants before, right, Jack? Right. And we talked about how this year, uh, 2020, is going to be the year of heroes for Valiant Comics. They are going to be releasing a new series every month, a uh, new number one. Um, some of them will be from with existing characters like Quantum and Woody, uh, one of the most uh, beloved kind of comedy duo of the Valiant Comics universe. And it's one of the reasons why I really enjoy Valiant Comics is that they, like a Marvel, say, the cinematic universe where you have a little bit of everything, they really do a good job as a publishing company to have books that really cater and cover all kind of subjects and genres. Uh, Quantum of Woody is, is that kind of buddy cop, uh, funny, humorous book that I've told Brian before. Like, I really think that he would get into it. Um, I think Eternal Warrior gives you that Thor feeling. You've got Exo Man of War, which is kind of that um, Iron Man type book um, with a little bit more of a cosmic edge to it. Um, and, you know, it just on and on and on and on. Um, and yes, I've talked about those pre order bundles. Where those get really tough is you have to put your order in before issue number one for issues number one through four. So two, three, four, you got to put that in now. Those are all FOC right now. Um, so, those tend to be some of the lowest printed books. And if Valiant ever sees its day, if there ever really becomes a time, Brian, where like, and I, and I think it's possible for any publisher, first off. It's not whether I like Valiant or not. I really think it's possible for any publisher in the right circumstance to become hot. We saw it in 2019 with Boom Studios. It'll be really interesting to see what in 2020 is kind of that go-to publisher. But if, if Bloodshot is a huge movie, people will be looking wherever and whenever they can in the Valiant backstock section looking for those back issues um, that they think will spike in value. And those pre-order variants are some of the best, like snake in the grass type, you know, sleeping dog, nobody sees it coming type of thing. But you mentioned that uh, Fool's Gold variant. That is another cool thing that Valiant does with these number ones. There is a high ratio book that they don't just 
make some variant. It's not just some cover. They go out of their way to try to make an extremely unique book. They've had color form variants in the past. They've had flocked like a Funko Pop variant. They've had carbon fiber variants. They've had glass variants. And now they've got a complete gold, fool's gold variant. I think that's a really cool, unique thing to do. Um, it's really thinking outside of a box. It gives value to a customer buying that one in 100 incentive. And then with IDW, we're getting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number 102. I think a lot of comic book, the flippers and the speculators, they've kind of died off a little bit on this book because the news has kind of dwindled out. But I'm still on board with it. I like the story. We're sitting with Jenica. We got Jenica coming out with their own series soon. This is going to have that regular cover. It's going to have that Kevin Eastman cover B, as well as that 1 in 10 incentive variant that IDW always does. But what do you say about this one, Jack? Yeah, I think this is going to be real interesting. This is going to give us a real glance. Like what we talked about with uh, issue 101, a real glance at uh, the future of where these turtle stories are going. Um, you know, there's a lot going on. I think that cover B, Eastman, is gorgeous. Um, it's a great cover. Um, but I also cover A, you see Jenica walking with another mutant. And the story, the solicitation for the story talks about new mutants. So it'll be interesting to see is there possibly some first appearances in this book? Um, that could hold water over time. And it's really hard to tell because, um, you know, Jenica first appeared in 51. She got a lot of action in 59, so she looked sort of important. Um, but then she was really just a sideline character all the way up until issue number 95. So you had to have some patience to, to see that first appearance to fruition. Definite long-term play, as I talk about on the Bolo show. Um, so you're going to have to be patient with that. But I really am paying attention to these um, next four or five Turtles issues. Back over to Marvel, we get back to those the end one shots, and this one is Captain Marvel the end. We recently talked about the Miles Morales one. This one's Captain Marvel. I like this for two reasons. I like both covers on this. You got that cover eight by Raza, but you also got that variant by Peach Momoko. Peach Momoko is a star on the rise. A lot of her art's getting a lot of attention right now. Captain Marvel seems to be a hot figure as well, whether it's MCU or the recent storyline with Star. But either way, it's something to take note of, and that's why we have it in the final word cutoff. But what do you think about this book, Jack? Yeah, I'm interested to read these the end stories. Uh, there's a couple others hitting final order cutoff on the same day. So be sure to head to simplemanscomics.com for sure and check out the actual list version to see the other one shots that will be hitting uh, final order cutoff at the same time. I know Deadpool was one of them. I think uh, we've talked on the show. One or I forget. Yeah, and we've talked previously about Miles Morales. Um, but yeah, so you're going to get a lot of first appearances, I guess. I think the market will probably call him like Old Man Miles or something of that nature. Or old Lady uh, Captain Marvel. Sounds disrespectful, but, but I agree with you. This is a book of note, the Captain Marvel book in particular. Um, for really one reason is we, we talked about Peach Momoko being really kind of that B+, plus, like could be an A artist, uh, really on a roll. Um, all of her work seems to be getting uh, picked up well. Now, it... You know, a lot of it has been ratio variants, so you don't see as much action with, say, the, the, the standard cover bees. But we've talked about how in the past, when artists become a listers, people go back and buy everything, and everything tends to dry up and go up. So this is something to pay attention to. Will this Peach Momoku variant get any sort of secondary market attention? Um, Time's going to tell, but that's the beauty of it is if you if you want to play that game or, again, for the, the biggest and most key for collectors who just want to lock that into their collection without having to pay those terrible flipper prices, now's your chance. Yes. I will say, though, be careful with that going back and buying up everything from an artist because there was a Batgirl cover that came out by a certain artist named Josh Middleton that got hot. Bunch of people went out there, and next thing you know, they're trying to buy up all these Josh Middleton covers. And those other covers didn't do much. They still haven't done much. And, in fact, Josh Middleton, still a fantastic artist, but those books aren't doing the things that that Batgirl, what was it, number 23? Yes, because jo Josh Middleton is an example of an artist who's at the level where Peach Moroku is now, Yeah, and people got preemptive. Yeah. They they jumped the gun before he reached that Adam Hughes, um, J. Scott Campbell, true, true, true A-list level. Um, and that's the level where it doesn't matter what cover J. Scott Campbell did, um, there's a demand for it. Uh, and 
you re it's really hard to hit that level. So yes, be be very cautious in doing that. But if you really love Peach from Oakland's work, now is the time to do it before that kind of stuff happens. And there's a lot of Josh Melton covers out there that for me, I can't understand why they aren't worth more. But yeah, there's some some of the best ones are some of the ones that aren't yep. like the big money books. But I still haven't given up on Josh Melton. I think it's it's not over for him. I think he'll get another day in the sun. The last book we're going to talk about is one of those DC seasonal, those 80 page giant. This is the type of stuff that I love just for the stories alone. This is going to be like their Valentine's book. I love the cover on this. It's by Yasmin Putri, but we get what, like 10 tales of love or something like that. And it's got a bunch of different artists kind of similar to that one shot we were talking about at the beginning of this video. But chat, what do you think about DC crimes of passion? Well, you know what? I really like the um, fact that DC Comics is really paying attention, Brian, to the comics market by releasing this. Um, this is something that I haven't seen other publishers pick up on, but if you really look back at trends in 2019, right? 2019 was the year of the meaningless first appearance. It was the year of um, horror, where horror comics really got hot. It was the year where independent comics could compete with the big boys um, on any given release. But it was also the year of romance comics. And while people may sit back and go, no way, you know, you had books while unconventional romance, like, uh, you know, um, Faithless, um, do extremely well, uh, showing, say, modern relationships, modern sexuality. You also had that classic true romance books. Um, those golden age books had a real renaissance in 2019. Matt Baker had an absolute career year. How many years into a career? Um, you're talking about a guy, a golden age artist, and uh, more people talked about Matt Baker this year than seemingly any year I've ever been involved in comics. Um, so it, that's really astounding, going back and grabbing um, all those obscure golden age romance covers. And what I love about this book is, yeah, the 10 stories is cool. And we've gotten a little bit of this kind of a feel from Tom King, um, who tried to tell you know, this type of a story with the Catwoman Batman saga that we're going to see continued on the Black Label. But this cover, this Yasmin Future cover that you mentioned is really a knockout. Um, really, I like the classic trade dress. Um, I like almost the risque, naughty. It has kind a of, golden uh, age feel to it. Really does. Really, really, really does. Um, so having just talked about Matt Baker and those kind of covers, that's what it feels like to me. So, um, Cool book, definitely one to check out. And it's well, one of the reasons why I like talking about the show. This is not one that your average, say, speculation list is going to talk about. Right? They're not going to talk about this book. It's got a high cover price. Um, it's not a book that's going to have like first appearances or anything important like that. But this is why we want to talk about books like this because it's got a nine ninety nine cover price, which means it costs retail shops five dollars to order it. There's a lot of shops that may skip it. They may um, order very. Or you um, might get a discount also from pre-ordering. Exactly. Um, and, you're, and obviously, a discount on a book of this kind of cost is going to be larger. Um, so if you're receiving, say, a 20% discount, obviously, we're talking about $2. Um, but you, you're aiding the LCS. You're also aiding yourself because you're giving yourself the best opportunity. This isn't a book I'd want to try to find on um, the shelf on New Comic Day unless I live in a big city. If you live where I live, this is one. I don't see a whole lot of the good old boys down in South Carolina saying, let me get those DC crimes of passion romance books on the shelf. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're going to be those square bound books and sometimes the, the, the binding on those and get all scuffed up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so there's the 10 books that we want to talk about real quick before we get into additional printings, we wanted to drop a giveaway. And before I tell you the prize in order to win the prize, not in the live chat, but on the actual video. We want you to comment. We're in a new year. It's 2020. Everyone has those New Year's resolutions. You hear a lot of time. What are your comic book New Year's resolutions? Comment on the video itself. What are your New Year's resolutions for comic books? Is there a series you want to read? Is there certain grail books you're on the hunt for? Comment down below. And then on next week's show, we'll pick one of those random commenters to win two things. First thing we got, it's kind of cold out there. So we got some Simple Man's Comics, as I can't keep a track of the camera. We got some Simple Man's Comics beanies. Nice and warm, as I still can't keep it on 
face there. So we're gonna get one of those, not this one. I promised to give you one that hasn't been on my head. But we're also gonna give you, we have Frankie's Comics as a channel sponsor. We put some of these books in those mystery bolo boxes, but we're gonna give one of the books away as well. And we're talking about that X-Force number one exclusive. So as I get the glare off of it for you. So the beanie and the exclusive variant, comment down below what your comic book New Year's resolutions are. And we'll draw one random winner in next week's last call video to win that. But Jack, what are the additional prints coming out this week? Well, Brian, Marvel's getting us caught up for some light holiday weeks because there is quite the list of additional printings coming from Marvel Comics. First, we have Avengers number 26, the second print. Then we've got that Conan Serpent War number one, second printing. Excalibur number three, second print. Fallen Angels three and Fallen Angels four go to a second printing. Magnificent Miss Marvel, if you're behind, we're getting you caught up. Issue seven, eight. 9 and 10 all hit second printing. And remember, 10's got that first appearance in it. Uh, Marauders number 3 and 4 are hitting second printing. Miles Morales 13, the big hot back issue that was recently released, uh, hit second printing. That's one to be on the lookout for. Uh, Savage Avengers number 8 hit second printing. Spider-Man number 3 hit second printing. Star Wars Rise of Kylo Ren number 1 hit second printing. Tony Stark Iron Man number 19 hit second printing. X-Force number four hits second printing, and X-Men number three hits second printing. Right, so those are a bunch of additional prints. I do want to highlight one of those. I reached out to Kevin Fields from Frankie's Comics. I asked him what his pick of the week was for FOC, and he actually brought up that Star Wars Rise of Kylo Ren number one second print. He's hot on that one. I think he has something. He thinks it might fall under the radar, but that's something to point out for Final Order Cutoff. Get your orders in on that. We got Knights of Ren. Issue number two is going more on that backstory of Snoke. Great series so far, but that's one that he liked. So I wanted to say that. Big shout out to Kevin Frankie's Comics, sponsor of this channel. And that being said, there's our final word cutoff picks. There's additional prints. If you want to see that full list of all the comic books hitting final word cutoff, make sure you head over to simplemanscomics.com. It's up there right now. Jack, anything you want to say before we go? Yeah, Brian, I just want to thank everybody for being here with us and say be sure if you are new to the channel, uh, like the video, but subscribe, hit that bell notification because we're going to be dropping all kinds of new content in 2020 and we are excited to bring to you the Simple Miss Comics family right here on the Simple Miss Comics YouTube channel. With that being said, this is Brian and Jack from Simple Miss Comics and we will see you guys in the next video. When the truth don't work, you start telling lies. Thought you were down the ride, you weren't down the ride. Caught switching, you were picking sides. Don't blink, caught slipping like a slip and slide. I was shooting dice till I got a nosebleed. Money on the floor, can't get cold feet. Took an L, should have put.